G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. On this blistery day today, we're looking at a Mazda 2 in the workshop that's been a little bit neglected. In fact, there's been a lot of work done on it, including gearbox, clutch, rear main seal, engine mounts, a full service, the list goes on. But I thought I'd bring you along just for the final step of the service, which is the fuel filter replacement. Shouldn't be too hard, guys, so let's get into it. fuel filter on a Mazda 2 is an in-tank filter, so it's just a matter of pulling out the back seat and accessing that panel. So to gain access to our fuel filter slash fuel pump assembly, we need to remove the back seat. Then we can find our inspection panel and pull the whole thing out, do it on the bench. By pushing down on here as well as here from this direction, you're able to release the locking mechanism. Give it a good shove. Maybe needs a bit more, and then pushing again, uh, up it comes. After you lift it up, you can clearly see the locking mechanism. That little pink fella there is the female section of the locking mechanism, and on the seat around about this position is the male fitting that meshes into that. Let's hold this seat up in an upright position. Perhaps we'll use the seat belts to hold it. I've just used the seat belts to hold the bottom section of the seat in an upright position so we don't have to undo all the seat belt connections down below. They're sort of intermeshed with the seat. Let's have a look at the panel. There's a little trim clip over here that needs to be removed to gain access to the entire panel. You can use a trim clip remover or a screwdriver. Flip him out the road, then we can pull that carpet right out the road exposing the entire panel here. Four Phillips head screws that need to be removed are one, two, three, four. Let's get them out. That will now expose our panel. We can pull that panel out and hey presto, there is our fuel filter um, ring that needs to be undone. Let's get some compressed air in here just to get rid of some of this dirt because we don't want that dirt to go in with our fuel when we remove the cover. I'm going to use a rag over the top to stop any dust coming into the cabin. Or attempt to at least. We've got our electrical connector here which includes the fuel pump as well as the fuel gauge. That needs to be disconnected. There's a little tab down the side here you need to push in and then lift the connector off. like that. Next is our high pressure fuel line. Now notice here there's a blue tag that goes around it. That's a locking tab. So we need to push that out of the road and then we can remove our connector out this way. Generally speaking, you would release the fuel pressure out of it. You would deactivate the system. But in this case, the vehicle has been sitting for several hours. So I have no problem just disconnecting it without doing that. There we go. Like that. Okay. Bit of fuel came out, but no pressure. All right, so our locking ring comes off next. Well, hopefully they can be a bit of a pain in the backside. As rough as it seems, I'm going to use a screwdriver and a hammer. Now, if you had the proper tool, you would simply attach it to these locking tabs over here and here, and you would unscrew the thing. I don't have that, but the old screwdriver and hammer, if used correctly, can work quite well. You'd need to get in behind these little ears here and over here. Don't just focus on one of them, move around and around so that it can move evenly to come off. And after a bit of time and patience, that ring should release itself. We'll get these fellas out the road and we should be able to undo this ring. Put that out over on the bench or just to the side here. Okay, let's lift our fuel pump up and have a look inside. Take that ring with us as well so we don't lose it. And we might have to tilt it to the side because we've got our float that's attached to it uh, for our sender unit. So sometimes that gets, gets caught. 
So I'm just draining off some of the uh, fuel that's sitting in the reservoir. This little fella down here, it's like a swirl pot that allows you to go around corners without losing any fuel pressure or pick up for the fuel pump. I think we're there. Okay. There's our little float. While the pump is out, it's a good idea to have a look inside and see if there's any dirt floating around. Now, there is a few little greeblies. I'm not overly concerned about those. They're fairly big chunks. I don't believe that there is uh, any um, residue or anything like that. It seems to be quite good. This type of fuel system is known as a return-less system. It only has one pipe going in and the pressure regulator is kept in the fuel pump as well, or the fuel system as well. Rather than fuel going to the rail and then coming back, circulating back, it goes through here and goes down to a pressure regulator where it is uh, relieved or you know put back into the fuel tank. Not a sponsor, but there's the part number in the Cooper one. It's a WCF299. So we need to disassemble this bad boy. Let's have a look at it. We may have to undo these lugs here and here, etc., to separate the two to find out what is holding these pipes in place. Be prepared for those lovely squishy plastic stretching sounds. Oh, that's not too bad. Not too bad. There it is there. Nice. I've taken a photo of various positions of this fuel pump. I don't want to get it wrong. We need to undo several things. We need to get rid of the fuel pump itself or undo the fuel pump, disconnect it from here, as well as a few of these wires here, here and here. And that bottom assembly needs to go back that way, undoing these clips around here. This is the new filter assembly, which kind of gives you the whole assembly all at once, doesn't it? Minus the fuel pump. So I'll be disassembling the bottom section here, the swirl pot area, and uh, see if I can get the pump in and etc, uh, etc. Et I kind of gather that the filter assembly is in here. I'll have a look at the old one when I get it out. We'll just take these little wires off here to give them a little more stretching space. Get them out there and there. Like that. There we go. Plenty more room now for them to stretch. So there's a little tab here, or these, this little pin needs to be pulled apart, then I assume that the whole thing will slide off that way. So just the pointy nose pliers in here should release it, like that. And that should slide up somehow, like that. Okay, that was fouling on here. So they don't actually give you this sock, in-tank sock, with the filter assembly. They should, they should, shouldn't they? Um, now it's just a matter of replacing the pump into the new housing and then we should be able to put it all back together. Being careful to pull off the, the uh, sock itself should be able to release the uh, fuel pump assembly. So that one there and that one there, there we go. Carefully pull them off like that. And then the pump in theory should move backwards I assume. Yeah, it's just in an o-ring so it's a little bit tight might have to access it through here just to push it backwards just a touch without breaking stuff, hey? There we go. Popped him out, mate. Popped him out. Uh, oh, <laughs> you idiot. I've got to get rid of the uh, cables, of course. And there should be a connector going onto it over this side. The easiest way to get rid of all the wiring is the connector stuck in here and that's what we've got to do. The new one comes with a connector coming through to this area here but we have to pull off our connectors, our fuel pump and our gauge assembly off at that. So we've got to lever all this back here, heave ho, heave ho and get to that little bloke down there or two little blokes down there. Right, we'll see if we can get those wires off. They're stuck in pretty well. I tell you what, I may need to get something to lever in through those little holes down there. You can see those holes. I'll just get this fella down here and see if that can lever anything up. Yeah, dude. Ah, there we go. Number one. Mm. Number two. Come on, fella. Come on. There we go. Both of them out. Nice job. We should be able to get most of that out now, I assume. Ooh, that's stick that to one side. Get that out there. And we should be able to get our fuel pump now. Uh, pull that fuel pump back that way once we get this cover off. And that cover, to get the entire cover off with their pressure relief valve, we need to get this fella out here, and that comes with the new kit. 
See this little tab down here? This goes onto our pressure relief valve, or our pressure regulator, I should say. And if we lift that up, then we should be able to pull this assembly off here. So I've just pulled the back of that little lever, and hopefully I can reach in here and just wiggle that backwards and forwards and then pull that off the O-ring assembly, I assume. <laughs> wow, that was tight, hey? All right, so there we go. Notice that there's a little O-ring down there. So that came off what I pulled off just then. Uh, just make sure that either that goes if there's a new one or reuse that one. In fact, I did find a new O-ring in the kit. That little fella there, they've given us a new spring as well. So now that all the stuff's out the road, you can really see how much dirt and uh, debris is in there, floating around in there. I'll give that a good clean out before we put it back together. And of course, this little O-ring here is the one that's replaced in the kit. I've given it a good wash out in petrol. Pretty happy with the results there. I can't see any uh, dirt floating around. It looks in good condition now. So I can start reassembling it. So once again, I've taken more photos because this little fella here for my fuel pump goes through the large hole over this side, not the small hole over that side. So just make sure you put in through that way. Comes out like that, no problemos. And then uh, we should have an O-ring fitting somewhere. If we have a look in the new filter, there's an O-ring for the pump already, so that's ready to go. And just slide it into place, and push it into that little O-ring, and it's all set to go. Don't forget our sock goes on next. According to my pictures, the fuel pump, the red and black wire, goes to the left. The uh, flat side of the surge pot sits over here, and then the uh, fuel gauge goes over that side. The connectors will only go in one way. They've got a little uh, ridge here that locates in a female section over there. I'm going to try and locate this fella in position, and that fits on this uh, pipe here, that which goes to our pressure regulator out the back, and it's got that new O-ring on it. you sort of got to cock it sideways. Have a look at the old one in the background there. You can see it's tilted sideways, and this is straight, so I've got to give it a bit of the old heave-ho to make it fit properly. Eh, don't like bending stuff, especially plastic. So if you compress this section here, it gives you more length on this hose here. Um, that's our, what's that, pressure relief hose, and you should be able to connect it a little bit easier rather than um, trying to reef on the thing while compressing everything together. Rather than pushing on this pipe here, push down on here because otherwise you might end up breaking that off. Ah, there we go. That made that beautiful sound. And I can see in here, not sure if you guys can see, but the little tab is now sticking through that window, which indicates that this lock is now in place. The sock indicates how the pump should fit. Now it's got to sort of fit under that pipe that we've just done. Sort of tucks under, then does a little bit of a twist. So get him in around there somehow, yeah, like that. And then we can put the spring over on, I believe, this side here. The new spring, which they've supplied in the kit. Now I'll clip these into place and see how it goes. There we go. Much better. All right, cool. So we need, need now to put on our uh, float assembly. And of course, then we've got our rubber O-ring that fits here. That float assembly just slid down the side here like that, and then locked into place with that little fella there. Just be careful pushing it in, and it should lock into place. Now that we've locked this into place and I've uh, rooted the wires in through here, I'm just going to hook up my connector now. I need to make sure that that goes in the correct way. There's a little bit that stands out here so that that should be able to locate it into place. So now we need to uh, hook up all our wires into the locators. Uh, so I've got my pump wire done, that's all good. Uh, this fella over here is my uh, gauge. Uh, that one goes, whoops, no. That one goes there and there. like that, and then these other fellas just sit in those little bits there and there. All right, so I've got my spring in, I've got my uh, pump in, I've got my O-ring, I've got everything sorted, and it should just compress like that, okay? No problems. One other thing, the O-ring that sits around here, don't forget that, guys. Take it off the other one, give it a clean, make sure it's in good condition. And we just slide him into position right up to the top collar, like that. And hey, 
I reckon it's ready to go back in the vehicle. I'm now ready to put my pump assembly back into place. I've kept a rag over it just to make sure there's no dust etc going in while I'm away. So I can remove all that, just get my rubber ring aside. Also make sure that your rubber ring groove or the thread etc is nice and clean. Just give it a quick blast out with air, but I'm going to be adding some silicon spray to it. I'll explain shortly. The pump assembly now goes back into place, making sure that we don't catch this little fella, our float, uh, as we put it in. So we sort of wiggle it in sideways like that, okay? That should, in fact, whoops, give it a bit of a wiggle and a jiggle, make sure that that seal isn't getting caught at all, and it should just push down. Just going to use some silicon spray just to make that rubber go in a bit easier. And before you get all up in my grill about using this stuff, let's read the destructions. What's it say? It says rubber or plastic. So that's what I'm using it for. It's correct application and it should make the seal go in easier. And of course that big nut as well. I assume that this arrow should be pointing to the back there because this fella goes in here and that fella goes in there when I'm all done. Let's put that nut on. Once again, a little bit of yonder grease on this here nut thread just to make it easier to go on. Just pushing down from the top here and feeling around the side, it feels quite even, so I feel confident to uh, tighten it up now. I'm not sure if it's meant to be that way, but there's an arrow here, perhaps you can see, and also there's a little arrow here, and I've tightened it, and it seems to have located at this point. Time to put all our connectors back on, or our single connector. Let's try that. It's locked into place, and now to put on our high pressure hose, we simply, hopefully, click it into place, like that. Let's start it up and check for leaks and stuff like that before we call it a day. So you heard the fuel pump picking up the fuel. It's uh, getting rid of all the air, of course. Okay, you can hear the change in sound as we get rid of more and more air as it circulates through the pump and the filter. Okay, that should be right now, I think. So I'll just let it run for a little while and just double check my work, make sure all the connections are okay, there's no leakage, make sure that it doesn't run out of uh, fuel, etc. Make sure I've got all those connections correct. But you could hear the fuel pump working. I'll double check my gauge and make sure that that is accurate as well. So my gauge was half full before, it's now half full again, so that's all okay as well. No visible leaks anywhere, it looks good. So I can button up the hatches, I can put the lid back on, seat back on, etc. After a very windy and tiring day, we've managed to replace a fuel filter, an in-tank fuel filter, in a Mazda 2 2007 model with a 1.5 litre engine in it, amongst many, many other items being done on it. I hope this video was helpful to you guys, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like, and feel free to comment down below. Don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. So before I get blown away, guys, I'm going to head off. This is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.